Welcome to Too Fun of Books. My name is Janelle and this is another book haul. I can't seem to control myself now that the stores are back open, so here are some books that I got in um, the used bookstore, thrift stores, little free libraries, etc. So let's get right into it. I'm also calling this video my summer TBR because I thought I'll end up reading these books these summers, this summer, so why not? So the first book I want to talk about uh, has just a little bit of a story behind it. So during March Mystery Madness, I did a video where I showed my true crime collection. I quite enjoy true crime, primarily historical true crime. And one of my wonderful subscribers recommended a book to me and she said it was called The Scalpel of Scotland Yard and it was a story, the story of Dr. Bernard Spilsbury and she said that uh, it was a book published in the 50s and it might be hard to get a hold of but it would be worth it if I could find it. And so I made a note of it and uh, I actually found a copy of it um, online on the um, Internet Archive site and I started reading it there and I was really enjoying it but I don't really like reading books on my computer and so I contacted one of our um, bookstores in town. Um, it's this fantastic bookstore called Spafford's Books and it's been here in Regina for like 50 years, maybe more than that. And it's it, right now it's in this little mini strip mall but there's no sign out front. So it's one of those bookstores where you, you have to know where it is. <laughs> if you go around the back there is a tiny little sign about this big above the door of the bookstore, but inside is fantastic. So it's got this great layout of a bookstore, but then if you go downstairs, there are rows and rows and rows of shelves and it goes actually the full length of the mini uh, strip mall underneath downstairs. And so it's this fantastic bookstore. Anyway, I contacted her and she managed to find a copy for me and I went and picked it up and so I am super excited that I now have a copy of The Scalpel of Scotland Yard, The Life of Sir Bernard Spilsbury. This was from 1952 and it goes into the life but mostly the work of, uh, Dr. of Sir Bernard Spilsbury. He was the pathologist in um, England, in London and he um, he was the pathologist who worked on the Crippen case, the Dr. Crippen case. Um, he was called the incomparable witness. So there's a lot in here about um, how often he was a witness during trials. So he worked from 1910 to, um, it looks like about 1947 when he died. And there are so many interesting cases and so Thank you, Donna, for recommending this book to me. I am super excited uh, to have a copy of it and to delve into the life of Sir Bernard Spilsbury. And then while I was there, of course I took a browse around, how couldn't I? And I was so excited to find Julian Simmons' Bloody Murder. I've been looking for this book for a long time. He wrote this in 1972. Julian Simmons uh, wrote Mysteries. He was also president at one time of the detection club, the detective club, and uh, he, this is his from the detective story to the crime novel, a history. So I'm super excited to have this in my library to read it and to find out what he has to say about the development of the detective story. And then I also found Weird Things Customers Say in Bookstores by Jen Campbell. I've already flipped through this book. It is hilarious. It is well worth it if you can find a copy of Weird Things Customers Say in Bookstores. And then, um, because I was out and about and in the mood for book hunting, I went to um, the other used bookstore in town, Centennial Books, and I found some great, great finds. I found three uh, Earl Stanley Gardeners. Now I love these additions. So I've been collecting uh, Earl Stanley Gardner, but only if I can find these additions. So this is Perry Mason solves the case of the drowsy mosquito. And this is a 
pocketbook edition from 1950. This book was originally published in 1943 and this is the 1950 edition. I also found um, The Case of the Caretaker's Cat um, and this edition is earlier. This is from 1942. The book was originally published in 1935. This edition is from 42 and I love I love especially pocketbook editions from the 40s. This one's from 1950 and it's still great, but I really love the 1940s editions. So I love the red um, the red uh, paper here and uh, just the style of that. And then there's another Earl Stanley Gardner. This one is in rough shape. I'm gonna have to uh, do a little bit of um, surgery on this one. But this is not a Perry Mason, it's um, Let's see. Uh, it could be a standalone. I'm not entirely sure. There's a Charles Morden who is a reporter from The Blade, uh, Dan Bleeker, who's the publisher of The Blade, and Sidney Griff, a famous criminologist. And this is from. This edition is 1959, and the book was written in 35. So I was uh, really excited to find those. I also found on their 25 cent cart, I found The Town Below by Roger uh, Lemelin. This is uh, Canadian, Canadian literature. This is put out by New Canadian Library. Um, and I'd never heard of this before, but of course for 25 cents, give it a whirl, right? It, the book is set in the working class parish of St. Joseph in Quebec City's lower town which Lemelin brings to life with vivid irony and farcical humor. Narrow piety in both clergy and laity, fantastic scheming among local politicians, self-importance in social climbers, all are good-naturedly derided in a, in a brilliantly comic assault upon provincialism and parochialism. An impassioned story of young love, jealousy, and ambition pursues its own course in this boisterously overgrown village, uneasily taking its place in modern urban society. Lemelin's sympathy with youth is at the heart of the book, as is his close understanding of, the, of working class energy and poverty and pride. With the town below, French Canadian literature bursts the confines of its old geographical frontiers and laid claim to a new, enlarged, and enlightened area of cultural responsibility and I believe that this has been translated from the French yes translated by Samuel Putnam and then I found a couple in um, Cora, Cora Harrison has written a series about um, Mara who is the judge and lawgiver in the Burren. So this is Ireland in the 1500s, the late 1500s. And the first book in the series is called My Lady Judge. And it's set in the Burren in Western Ireland in 1509. Sorry, not 15, the late 1500s, 1509. And uh, it's about um, these people who still live by the ancient Breha, Brehan Laws and so she is a judge and lawgiver and I, I quite enjoy this series so I found My Lady Judge and then I also found the third in the series The Sting of Justice and I have never seen these covers before but I really like these covers. Who is this publisher? It's Pan. Yeah so I really like these covers. So yeah I was excited to find those and I also found the first in the Thomas Chalner series by Susanna Gregory, um, A Conspiracy of Violence. Th these are set in London in the Restoration, so this is 1662. For some, the early years of the Restoration are giddy, glorious ones. For others, like Thomas Chalner, they are uncertain, murky, and dangerous. So he has just returned from 10 years abroad in the employ of the Commonwealth, and now he's looking to work for the king and he gets himself a position with the Earl of Clarendon and he has to investigate a rumor that there's a cache of gold buried in the Tower of London. Um, 
Yes, so against a backdrop of the shadows of Puritanism and of the sunlit decadence of a gaudy court, Susanna Gregory has woven a compelling tale of the baggage of betrayal, the weight of secrets, and the pit of vipers that eternally infest the corridors of power. I really like this series, so I was very excited to find the first one. And then I also found a nonfiction called Inside Dickens London by Michael Patterson. I've never heard of this book or this author, um, but it's got a quote from Peter Ackroyd on the back. Out of the babble of voices, Michael Patterson has been able to extract the essence of London itself. Read this book and re-enter the labyrinth of the now ancient city. So Inside Dickens London. And then um, finally I found Blitz Hospital, True Stories of Nursing in Wartime London by Penny Starnes. So this looks really interesting. Uh, here's a great picture on the back. Um, so this one focuses on two different hospitals um, as they struggle to cope with mounting wartime casualties, Sir Thomas's, St. Thomas's, and the London. So it uses diaries, letters, and reports of medical and nursing staff to highlight the many human stories of tremendous courage and hope that lived and breathed within the corridors of London's hospitals during the Blitz. So this sounds like a really interesting um, history as well. All right, and then from um, the Log House Thrift Store, I have to be careful saying that name because I always, for some reason, call it the Log House Tavern. <laughs> anyway, I found a couple of books there. This is The Pool of St. Brannock by Philippa Carr, who also writes as Victoria Holt. I have a number of books that she's written as Victoria Holt but I've never picked up any um, that she's written as Philippa Carr, and I'm not sure uh, why, what the difference between the books are, because this sounds very much like uh, a Victoria Holt, but it is set in Cornwall, and Angelette is born into the magnificent Cador mansion where she lives in secure contentment with her family until the fateful day at the legendary pool of St. Brannock when she encounters a desperate and dangerous fugitive, a meeting that will shape her life, her loves, and her fate. So this story takes her from her home in Cornwall to London, to Australia, and then back to England. So it sounds like a bit of an epic story, and I always enjoy those. And then I also found another Ian Rankin, another of his Rebus books. This is called, this is The Naming of the Dead. And this is, I'm not sure uh, where we are in the um, Rebus um, series, but this was published in 2006. And uh, the G8 countries have gathered in the capital and with daily marches, demonstrations, and scuffles on the street, the police are stretched to the limit. But one detective is still determined to surplus, is still deemed surplus to requirements. D.I. John Rebus has been sidelined for fear of embarrassing his superiors at this most crucial time. However, all that changes when the nighttime plunge of a young politician from the walls of Edinburgh Castle drags Rebus back onto center stage. Suicide must be proved and quickly to avoid distraction from the main event. And then I visited some Little Free Libraries. I have not visited any Little Free Libraries during this time of quarantine. A lot of them actually shut down, um, which I get, but there's this great little cluster of Little Free Libraries. There's three of them within a block on Leopold Crescent, and I love to go visit those uh, Little Free Libraries. And I found three, three books. So I got Somewhere in France by Jennifer Robson, and this is a story that takes place during World War I over in France. This was published in 2014, and Lady Elizabeth Neville Ashford, she wants to do her bit, and so she ends up driving ambulances in France as part of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. And I found Death Comes to Curland Hall by Catherine Lloyd. She has written a series of historical mysteries called uh, the Curland St. Mary Mysteries, and Curland St. Mary is a village, 
and the main character in this series is Lucy Harrington. Um, and they take place in mm, Victorian maybe, Edwardian maybe, I can't remember now. This is, oh yes, 1817. Uh, and this is from 2015. It is the third, it looks like it's the third in the series. And so I have read this series and quite enjoyed it. Uh, and so yeah, when I found a copy in a little free library, I was very excited. And then finally, I found Dandy Gilver and the An Unsuitable Day for a Murder. These, this series is by Catriona McPherson. I really like this series and I've been collecting it whenever I can find them. I had three, so I was really excited to find another one that I hadn't, um, didn't have. And this is a historical mystery series set um, in the 20s, I believe. Yes, 1927. Um, and Dandy Gliver, Dandy Gilver, for some reason I have a hard time saying her name. She is an aristocrat. Uh, she is married to an aristocrat, um, but she is also an amateur sleuth. And um, I just really enjoy these stories set in the 20s. And um, so this one is. I think this is the fifth one in the series. And then, um, <laughs> these are these are technically from a little free library, although you're gonna laugh because they're from my little free library. We just recently put up a little free library in our front yard, but we have been saving books for this little free library for a couple of years. And um, Aaron's parents, who, uh, who live in, in our house, they live uh, in an apartment in the house, and uh, they've been they've been saving books as well. And when we put all put them all together to uh, to choose which books we're going to go out first into our little free library, there were three from Aaron's parents' collection that um, that I wanted to keep that I didn't realize that she was hanging on to for the little free library. And so one is Anne of Green Gables. Um, I love this book. I've read it numerous times, but, um, and I had always thought that I had a copy of it and I was surprised to discover that I didn't. So, um, I saved this one for me. This edition, um, is great. It's an edition from, um, 1969. So, Anne of Green Gables. And then I also found 1916, a novel of the Irish Rebellion by Morgan Llewellyn, uh, which is, it's a historical novel, which I love, and an interesting time period that I am looking forward to reading. I've never read anything by this author, um, but I'm more than happy to give it a shot. And then finally, and I'm going to butcher this author's name, and I apologize. Con Eggledon. He wrote War of the Roses, uh, book one, Stormbirds. I was really excited to find this. I love historical fiction, and the War of the Roses is a time period that I'm really interested in, but I don't know a lot uh, about. And look at this cover. It is just gorgeous. So this book is called Stormbird is the first episode in the extraordinary War of the Roses in which two families plunged England into a terrible civil war for 30 years. It's, um, and I just had to show you uh, these end papers. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? So that's a map and then the back is um, a family tree, royal lines of England. So yeah, I was super excited to find this and um, I will totally read this um, for sure and more than likely will want to be trying to find the rest in the series. Uh, so he's got uh, maps in the front, which I always love. There's a number of different maps and then another uh, family tree. So yeah, I was uh, super excited about, about this one. And then, um, 
So the same day that I made my uh, little trip to pick up the scalpel of Scotland Yard at Spafford Books, um, and I also went then to uh, Centennial Books, the other bookstore, uh, I visited a thrift store called um, Value Village where <laughs> I made a pretty good dent in their book section. So they have a deal where if you buy four books, the fifth one is free. And uh, so you may be surprised or you may not be surprised to know that I came away with three free books. So let's get right into it. I found the Mammoth Book of Locked Room Mysteries and Impossible Crimes. I was really excited to find this. I love Locked Room Mysteries and this has got some great, great authors in it. Martin Edwards. Kate Ellis, Margaret Fraser, John Dixon Carr, um, yeah, uh, just a whole bunch, Peter Tremaine, Jacques Futrell, Bill Pronzi. So um, yeah, I am uh, really looking forward to delving into some uh, impossible crime and locked room mysteries. I found Homefront Girls by Rosie Goodwin. Um, and this is just a historical fiction set during World War II. Uh, three girls all turn up for work the day war is declared and what I find interesting about this particular one because let's be honest there is a ton of World War II historical fiction out there but this is is set in Coventry and so that will be very interesting to discover um, a little of that story because of course we know Coventry was bombed pretty heavily uh, during the Second World War. And, uh, and then I found a couple of books by an author I'd never heard of, but they are historical fiction set during in Tudor times. This is called To Die For by Sandra Bird, and it's a novel of Anne Boleyn. And then another one from her called The Secret Keeper, a novel of Kath Catherine Parr. So I've never heard of Sandra Bird, but I am more than willing to give them a shot. I love the Tudor time period, so I'm uh, really excited to delve into these. Um, most of what you're going to see here from this particular um, book haul in, in uh, Value Village are historical fiction and a lot of them from the Tudor time period. So if someone out there is wondering what happened to their historical books, <laughs> I think I got them all. <laughs> Uh, this is A Strange Scottish Shore by Juliana Gray, and this is a historical mystery set in Scotland in 1906, which I love. I really enjoy the Edwardian time period, but there's not a ton of historical mysteries set during that time period, so I'm really excited. And they head to the Orkney Islands, and there's an archaeological dig involved, and all of that sounds very interesting to me. And then I got a couple of books that each of these were winners of the Governor General's Award. The Governor General is a literary award here in Canada um, that is um, administrated by the Canada Council for the Arts. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty prestigious award. And so this is called The Law of Dreams. This by Peter Behrens. Uh, and this is from uh, 2006 and not only is this the winner of the Governor General Awards um, but it is a finalist for Rogers Writers Trust Fiction Prize, a finalist for the Commonwealth Writers Prize, a finalist for Amazon.ca slash Books in Canada First Novel Award, a Globe and Mail Top 100 Book, an Amazon.ca Best Book of 2006 and a National Best Seller. So I am really intrigued by this. I've never heard of this writer, um, and apparently this is his debut book, and so to be so highly acclaimed is very interesting. This is a historical fiction driven from the only home he has known during Ireland's Great Hunger of 1847. Fergus O'Brien makes the harrowing journey from County Clare to Canada, traveling with bold girls, pearl boys, navvies, and highwaymen. Full of vivid, unforgettable characters, The Law of Dreams is lyrical, emotional, and thoroughly extraordinary. And then the other book I found that won the Governor General Award is Cool Water by Diane Warren. And Diane Warren is uh, another Canadian author, and she actually lives here in Regina, where, where I live, which is uh, really cool. And this book in particular was so quirky. It's set here in Saskatchewan, which I love. Um, and kind of just, I was reading the synopsis and it just, it really did feel 
prairie-like, Saskatchewan-like. This is from 2010. Uh, and so it's set in a town called Juliet, Juliet, Saskatchewan. You might imagine that not much happens in this dusty oasis on the edge of the Little Snake Sand Hills. Its inhabitants caught in the limbo between a century-old promise of prosperity and whatever lies ahead. But the hills vibrate with life and the town's heart beats in the rich and overlapping stories of its people. The foundling afraid to accept responsibility for the farm his adoptive parents left him. The bank manager grappling with a sudden understanding of his own inadequacy. A shy couple, well beyond middle age, struggling with the recognition of their feelings for one another. A mother of six, troubled by recurrent dreams of a plane crashing in her backyard. And somewhere, lost in the sand, a camel named Antoinette. As Juliet's characters go about the business of their daily lives, navigating the all-too-human reality of miscommunications, fumbled dreams, unexpected detours, and even unmarked victories, they discover, too, moments of grace, compassion, and beauty. Moments that remind them that despite it all, they will find their way forward. At once witty and perceptive, deeply moving and profound, Cool Water is a timeless story of the mysteries of everyday life. And I found another in the Agatha Raisin series by M.C. Beaton. This is The Blood of an Englishman. It's one of the later in the series, but not the last. And um, so I've been collecting these. I quite enjoy M.C. Beaton. And these are uh, just mysteries set in the Cotswolds. And I found an early uh, Aunt Dimity. I was really excited. Nancy Atherton uh, wrote the Aunt Dimity series. And this is Aunt Dimity's Good Deed. I think it's the third one in the series. Um, and so I'm collecting those as well, although I only have about 16 and there's like 33 or something in this series. But um, this is a series about an American named Laurie Shepard who finds out that she has inherited a cottage in England from someone called Dimity, who she always thought was a made up person in the stories that her mother told her. But she discovers that Dimity and her mother met each other in London during World War II. And so these are just cozy mysteries set in the Cotswolds uh, that I quite enjoy. I found Robert Goddard's Fault Line. Um, I like Robert Goddard and I've picked up a number of his books. This one is um, set in the 60s, it looks like, the late 60s. A search for missing documents in an international mining company becomes a voyage into dangerous waters. And then I found a few, um, a few more uh, Tudor uh, historical fiction. This is Queen by Wright by Anne Easter Smith. I've never heard of this author, but the book sounded interesting. It is the story of Cecily of York, mother of two kings and the heroine of one of history's greatest love stories. Um, I'll admit I've also never heard of Cecily of York. Um, she is the Duchess Cecily Neville, Duchess of York, and ancestor of every English monarch to the present day. Very interesting. And so she is uh, married to Richard, Duke of York, um, and. Henry the sixth becomes unfit to rule. So this, I believe this is um, also potentially War of the Roses. I'm a little unfamiliar with um, that particular era. So I, I don't think this is Tudor. I think this is still Plantagenet. So York and Lancaster. Yes. So this is uh, War of the Roses, but focusing on um, Cecily of York. And then I found four Alison Weirs. I was so excited. I had actually started reading Catherine of Aragorn on my computer. I got the book as an ebook from the library, but it was so long and I didn't want to read it on my computer. And so when I found a copy of it, I was so excited. So this is her first, the first in her six Tudor Queens series. Um, Catherine of Aragorn, The True Queen. This was published in 2016. And I also found Anne Boleyn, A King's Obsession, which is the second in the series. 
and Anna of Cleve, the princess in the portrait, which is the fourth in the series. Super duper exciting. And then I also found a standalone Captive Queen. This is a novel of Eleanor of Aquitaine, which I also find fascinating. So this is much, much earlier. This is like the late 1100s, I think. And Eleanor of Aquitaine um, marries uh, Henry and kind of the, the start of that Plantagenet dynasty. So yeah, that was my massive book haul, but these are the books that I also plan to read this summer. I'm super excited. So, um, have you found any books recently that you were just so excited for, about? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Uh, what are you planning to read this summer? And I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.